Let's take a look at how to configure MainStage to work with two separate MIDI controllers, giving each one its own unique sound or sounds. Well, I've got two keyboards. I have a nice 88 key Nord Stage here, and I have a smaller 49 key Samson Graphite keyboard. And I'd like it if I could have a piano on the bottom and organ on the top. So I've opened up the two keyboards preset that they've given me for MainStage, and the first thing I'm gonna do is set it up so that each keyboard is receiving MIDI messages independently. Because right now, both of these keyboards are set to receive all MIDI messages. So if I play a note on the graphite, as you can see and hear, it's playing on both the top and the bottom keyboard. Same goes for the Nord Stage. What I'm going to do is go to the layout screen and first tell each keyboard to receive its own individual MIDI messages. So we'll go to the top keyboard, which is my smaller one, and I'm gonna tell that keyboard, I'm going to assign it. I could do it manually, go to the port and just tell it, but I always like to use the assign button just in case my controller is sending out on a channel that I don't remember, that I'm not sure about or whatever. So I'll hit assign, play some notes, and there we go. Top keyboard is now getting only the Samson Graphite. If I hit assign again to turn it off, it's not gonna learn anymore. If I play some notes on the Nord stage, it's only coming through on the bottom. Only problem is the bottom one's still receiving everything. As you can see, my Samson Graphite is triggering both keyboards. So I'm gonna go to the bottom one and I'm going to learn that one now as well. I'll hit the assign button and I'll play some notes on the Nord stage. There we go. Looks like it's receiving, so I'll click the assign button again to stop. And it looks like I've got two keyboards working independently. Nord Stage on the bottom, Samson Graphite on the top. While I'm here, I might as well do some customization just to make it easier to identify which keyboard is which later on when I'm adding patches. So on this bottom keyboard, I'm actually going to give it a better name. Let's delete the words MIDI output and leave it Nord Stage. That, there we go, a little easier to see. And for the top one, same thing. Just gonna get rid of the port one stuff. I don't need to see that. I don't even really need to see Samson, just Graphite 49. That's my Graphite 49. And the other thing is I'd like to make this top keyboard a little smaller so that I have more room. It's all about screen real estate. And also, so I always remember at a glance quickly at the screen, oh, that top keyboard is the small one and it has these sounds. So I'm going to tell it the number of keys, which is 49. It's a little bit smaller. So we'll resize that screen control. Let's have it learn the lowest key as well so it knows that it, what's in the right place. So I have it learn the lowest key and turn learn off. And now, as I play along, from the lowest to the highest, we're good. All right, so I've kind of customized everything a little bit. And even if I want to save space, I don't think I'm gonna do more than two layers on the top keyboard, probably or the bottom for this purpose right now. So let's shrink them down a little bit to just save some space. I'll go to the edit window. Wow, much neater. Actually, we got a little bit of shadow here left over and if we want to get rid of that too, we could do that. Some of that cool visual stuff. Let's just shrink it down there a little bit. All right, because we might want to put something there. We might want to put a button there. All right, so now I have a smaller keyboard and a bottom keyboard. Here's my bottom one, just electric piano. And the top one is just getting the pad. So next, I'm going to change the channels. I'm gonna take this one, Classic Electric Piano, and now that I've given it the focus by clicking on that particular channel strip, I could change the sound by using the setting button, but I like to give it the focus and then use the channel strip library. I'm gonna scroll down until I find piano. I'm gonna make that a nice, powerful Bosendorfer Grand Piano. There we go. Now you notice the name of the layer is still Classic Electric Piano. So I can change that by changing the title of the channel strip. And it's a good habit to get into to do that. So you always have good organizational skills and you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna call this Grand Piano. There we go. And now I wanna to go to this soft analog pad and I wanna make that an organ. We're gonna do a traditional piano organ setup for a classic rock type gig. So 
I'll go to my channel strip library and pick vintage B3 organ. And then I'm going to go for the lighter shade organ. I wonder what that is supposed to emulate. You have to use your imagination. Excellent. It's sounding pretty good. If I want to get in there and adjust the draw bars, I could click on that input uh, for the channel, the instrument generator, and pull a few things out. Give it a little more high-end sound. Maybe not quite as much. Kick that Leslie in, though. Turn the rotation up. Excellent. Hallelujah. So there I have it. A nice piano. Piano and organ sound going on. And I can do this as many times as I want. Now, I can change this icon because now this icon has got a picture of a, a Rhodes on it here. So I'll click on the patch and I'll go to the attributes. And let's change the icon to, well, it's piano and organ. Let's just technically, I'll put a grand piano to make it a little more organizable. Finally, the name of the patch, electric piano and synth, not anymore. So I'm going to go right here in the patch list, double click the title, and we'll call it Grand Piano and B3. And there we have it. Oh, I forgot to change the soft analog pad channel strip up top. Let's have good habits. Go to that channel strip, change it over, B3 organ. And now it's customized for exactly the way I need it to work. Got a Grand Piano and a B3 organ. I've got two different sounds going on. And I've named it. I can see everything at a glance. Grand piano there, B3 organ there. I can hear it. I see the velocity of it. Everything looks great. If I want to keep working from here, let's say, for example, I want to do grand piano and let's try some strings. Our old standby. I could just duplicate this patch, click on it, go to edit, select duplicate or do Command D. Now I've got that, and I just switch that B3 organ channel, go to the channel strip library, orchestral strings. We'll pick uh, some full strings. And remember, get in the habit of renaming it. So it shows up there, grand piano and strings. We'll rename the patch. And we're all set. Now I've got some strings on that top keyboard completely independent from the piano on my bottom keyboard. So two keyboards going at the same time playing different stuff. Really, really a lot of flexibility. You can see how we could get into this and make lots and lots of different patches. Eventually, we'll talk about saving processing space by using aliases or sets. So if you're going to use the same grand piano all the time, you can kind of make a bank of instruments you use a lot at the top and then use lots of aliases. And that'll also allow you to change one piano and change them all at the same time instead of going back to every single patch individually and having to do it that way, which can take a long time. So if you want to change all those pianos, you'll just change the original one and they're all aliased or you're using it at the set level. It'll all change together. So that's something we'll talk about in uh, one or two tutorials later. So stick around.